Hi, everybody, and welcome to Facebook Live. I know that this is a very busy time of day uh, in the evening when your kids are all home and you're trying to get dinner and homework and everything else. Uh, so I'm going to make this very short. There's two main things that I wanted to uh, tell you about. Number one, uh, some of the guest speakers that we have coming up, and number two, a little bit about the blog uh, that I just posted for you uh, this week. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about the guest speakers. We haven't had a guest speaker since February 19th. Uh, and so um, on February 9th, February 19th was the last person that we had that uh, was uh, the guest speaker, the Blessies from St. Paul, Minnesota. They were children's authors. Hopefully you were able to see that. Uh, so let me give you a rundown of the next three. On March 23rd, I have Kathy Klotz. She is the executive director of Intermountain uh, Therapy Animals. They have a program there called READ. In fact, their organization has been going uh, strong for almost 20 years. And they have this program called READ, and they use animals to help children who struggle with reading. So I've asked her to come and talk about that. And then on April 7th, I have Dr. Leah Andrews. She, is, um, uh, she has her PhD in Eastern Medicine and has written numerous books. She's fascinating. She's very, very interesting. And she's going to come and talk about five elements of children's personalities based on Chinese medicine. Now, if you've um, studied Chinese medicine at all, it is fascinating. Uh, there's a big difference between Eastern medicine and Western medicine. Western medicine, they kind of look at pieces of the person. But in Eastern medicine, they look at the whole entire person. And so like in Western medicine, you would talk about the different parenting styles. But in Eastern medicine, you talk about children and their personalities and how you can adapt your parenting styles to help them to reach their potential. So she is going to be talking about those five personality elements um, based on Eastern medicine. Then on April 20th, I have Carla Hastings Crossett of Anybody Can Play. She's a musician and she has been working on an app to help children to learn how to uh, read music and to play a keyboard. This is not a mobile app. This is one that you use on your computer. But it's fascinating, uh, and it's only $1.99 a month. She's not suggesting that you stop your child's music lessons, but to add this to it, uh, and it will help them. She has uh, piloted this program in preschools and in elementary schools um, all along the East Coast with incredible success. Uh, then in May, I actually am having my son, Ryan, come. He's a professor at Salisbury University in uh, Salisbury, Maryland, and I've asked him to talk about the uses of enchantment. In other words, the uses and importance of reading fairy tales to your children. I read fairy tales to my children from utero all the way up until they left home at age 18 to um, go to college. But Ryan, um, his PhD is in English literature and creative writing, but he has talked a lot and written a lot of um, articles that have been published in journals about the uses of glass in fairy tales. So I've asked him to come and talk about the importance of fairy tales. So those are the next four people. I also have one other person on the docket that I'm just waiting for a date, and then I'll tell you about her. So let's talk a little bit about the blog. The reason that I wanted to come on today and talk about it was because to help you to understand some of the things that I didn't include. But it's called uh, Nine Unique Ways to Be Amazingly Smart, and it's about the theory of multiple intelligences. Now, this theory has been around for eons, and, but in 1983, a professor at Harvard University by the name of Howard Gardner published a book entitled Frames of Mind. And in it, what he had done is he had taken all these hundreds of ways to be smart, and he had categorized them into seven areas of intelligence. Then, in uh, it was 1996, he added an eighth intelligence, and in 2005, he added a ninth intelligence. Now, let me tell you what these intelligences are. They're very interesting. We have the logical mathematical, which is number smart. We have the uh, verbal linguistic, which is word smart. We have spatial, which is uh, picture smart. Music, which is sound smart. Uh, bodily kinesthetic, which is body smart. Interpersonal intelligence, which is people smart intrapersonal intelligence, with, which is self-smart. Then in 1996, he added naturalist intelligence, which is nature smart. And then in 2005, he added existential intelligence, which is spiritual or cosmic or philosophical smart. So those are the nine ways 
that you can be smart. Now, in 1983, when his book came out, of course, educators went bonkers. So immediately, they took all these smarts, they started developing tests so that they could pigeonhole kids as they walked in the doors of school into one of these areas. Gardner just about flipped out. He says, if you actually read my entire book, I will tell you, do not pigeonhole any child or any person or any adult into one of these intelligences. The reason being, and I loved what he said here, he said, we have all of these intelligences within us, and they will surface at different times in our lives as we nurture them. He said, what you're doing over here, he says, gone is the idea of a fixed intelligence that happens at birth, and then we can measure it through an IQ test in the fourth grade and the seventh grade. He says, that is debunk. He said, that is not correct. He said, we have all these ways within us to be smart. And to me, I love that because it just shows you the incredible potential of the human being. So um, <clears throat> how I divided this into... Um, uh, another thing that he said, too, that I don't want to forget, uh, this was not in Frames of Mind, this was in a subsequent book that he wrote, but he said this, he said that music intelligence was so powerful that it had the ability, if a child learned a musical instrument or got involved in the arts in any way, that they would simultaneously develop these other intelligences because it was that powerful. In my book, um, What's the name of my book? Good Music, Brighter Children. I actually have a graph where I've gone through and I've studied all these intelligences and then I've shown you different ways of how uh, studying music and the arts can develop those other intelligences. Okay, so the blog. So what I do on the blog is, is mainly bullet points because I think it's easier for people to, to read and, and understand bullet points. So I give the intelligence, then I give characteristics of the intelligence, then I give different ways that you can nurture that intelligence within yourself, your children, the neighbor kids. Um, so there's different ways of developing it. Then I tell you different ways if you... If your child is involved with music or any of the arts, like the visual arts or the dramatic arts or the drama and so forth, here's different ways that you, your child will be developing this particular intelligence at the same time. And then I give famous people who have developed these particular intelligences to a high degree. Now, I just got through saying that we have all of them within us, but usually we can take two or three of these and develop them to a very high and sophisticated degree. So I've given you some examples of some famous people who have developed a particular um, intelligence to a very high degree. So that's basically it in a nutshell. I want you to have fun with this blog. I hope that you find it really interesting that uh, you'll find different ways and you'll look at your children and say, oh, they have this particular intelligence now, but I also see this and this and this that they're developing at the same time. And then when you watch them grow into these budding, amazing adults, you'll see other intelligences that they are adding as well. So it's an incredible theory. It's very... Um, um, it's very encouraging about the potential of all of us. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for tuning in. If you were able to, I'll see if there's um, any people over here. Cheryl, thank you for joining us. Good to see you. And um, we will talk. I'm going to try and come on Mondays for just a few minutes to give you a little bit of background on the blog. Uh, probably not every.